Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly pop culture wrap-up. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is the weekly pop culture wrap-up. It's the show where I go over the week's pop culture news, mostly comic books and movies. Let's get right into it with some comic book news. We got some announcements for Free Comic Book Day. X-Men Free Comic Book Day. It's going to be one of two major Marvel releases for Free Comic Book Day, which this year is May 2nd, 2020. Free Comic Book Day, if, you're, if, you're, if you don't go to your comic shop on Free Comic Book Day, you really, really should support the shop, buy some stuff that usually have great sales. I know that my shop does. Fantastic day. Meet a lot of people in the community. It's a great day. I plan on doing a vlog throughout this year's free comic book day, which may be a bit hectic. Anyway, I'm very excited for this year because Marvel's releasing an X-Men free comic book day issue. It's going, to be it's going to be written by Jonathan Hickman. It's gonna have a main story by Jonathan Hickman that's going to lead in to the first game-changing X event of summer 2020. At least that's what they promise. It also has a story by Tom Taylor and Ivan Coelho. Recently, the fill-in artist um, the alternating artist, I should say, for um, Ryan Stegman on Venom, right? So you can recently catch this cat's work on Venom. Um, and that's going to tease something that they're doing, right? So Tom Taylor has got a Dawn of X book, or at this point, is it still the Dawn? Surely. We're not quite at noon yet, nor are we near Twilight. At least I hope not, right? I'm very excited for this one. The big event this summer from Marvel is going to be X-Men related. We've been asking and talking about when's the Donny Cates big giant null story coming. I think that's going to be in 2021. 2020 is going to be the big X summer event. Very excited for this. I think Hickman and company have been laying a lot of great groundwork on the X-Men titles. Also very excited to see what Tom Taylor is going to do with an X-Men book. Maybe he's the writer on the X-Core book that we haven't seen yet. Though we do think that that's pretty much Leah Williams. Or maybe he's writing that Moira book that still hasn't happened yet. I don't know. It doesn't matter. What, I, what really matters to me is that on Free Comic Book Day, you can get one of these X-Men books that's going to have a Jonathan Hickman story and a Tom Taylor story laying the groundwork for the first groundbreaking, game-changing X book of the summer of 2020. A big event. Right? Super excited for that. But Kate's fans, don't worry, Spider-Man Venom is a free comic book day one-shot, also from Marvel Comics, written by Donnie Cates and Jed McKay. Jed McKay is the writer on Black Cat. Black Cat has been outselling Spider-Man, at least at times, over the last couple months. Uh, last few months, I should say. Especially with the first couple issues. Maybe, I think that's the J. Scott Campbell covers, but whatever. Um, so, it's teasing what's coming up in Spider-Man and what's coming up in Venom. Now, it doesn't say in the solicitation that it's teasing the next big Venom event, right? So I don't think that's coming until 2021. I think that right now, Donny Cates is basically gearing up to enter Act 3, right? Maybe they're in Act 2. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The structure doesn't matter. What matters is that in addition to the X-Men book, you're going to have a Spider-Man Venom book. It's going to have a Donny Cates Venom story in it. It's going to tie into what's coming up. You also got this Jed McKay story, so that's going to be cool as well. Other X-Men news. In May, Juggernaut. Juggernaut. Juggernaut gets his own series, and it's written by Fabian Niciaza with artwork by Ron Garney. Well, that's a hell of a creative team, to be honest with you. Fabian Niciaza, to me, is a legend in the comic book industry. I actually met this cat before and did a panel with him. He's a super cool guy. He's also the guy that wrote New Warriors, along with Mark Bagley as the artist, and I have nothing but respect for Fabian Iciesa. So I'm very excited to see what he does with Juggernaut. K. Marco. Sure, why not, right? Um, Ron Garney has, is one of those rare artists that continuously gets better as the years progress. His recent work is better than his OG work, and I love his OG work. So I'm very excited about this one. Um, Juggernaut on his own main series... Yeah, big deal, right? But it's Niciesa and Garney. I'm super excited. Anything related to X-Men right now, I'm just eating up. At least that's me, right? Um, speaking of X-Men, giant size X-Men, a one shot every month, basically. Jonathan Hickman writing a spotlight on a particular character. This new one is Phantom X. I've been waiting for this one because the last time we saw Phantom X 
was that Charles Soule Astonishing X-Men series in which Xavier basically takes over Phantom X's body. So I'm wondering if this book is going to give us a little bit more information on what has happened since then, what is going on with Xavier? Is Phantom X still trapped in somehow in Xavier's mind? What's going on here? Are they creating him a new body? I don't know, but I love it. And it really once again establishes the fact that Jonathan Hickman is such a huge fan of the Grant Morrison X-Men run, as am I, that he's pulling a lot from that series, right? So if you're loving the Hickman Dawn of X stuff, the Hox Pox and all that jazz, and you've never read the Grant Morrison new X-Men run from like the early 2000s, I highly encourage you to do so. I'll throw links below to trade paperback or omnibus editions, whatever is available right now. It's a fantastic run. I'm very excited to see this. Speaking of those giant size books, the Nightcrawler one was supposed to come after Magneto. Magneto's been pushed back. So now the Nightcrawler one's actually coming out first and it's been bumped up a few weeks. So you're going to have Nightcrawler, then Magneto, and then Phantom X. I'm super excited for this one. Um, something Marvel's, I think, is coming, right? So Marvel's teasing a big announcement for next week. So obviously we'll be covering it next week's weekly pop culture wrap-up. But they're teasing something from Kurt Busiek, from Alex Ross, an artist, um, Yildere Sinar. Or something like that, right? Anyway, um, a few months ago, Music was on a podcast. I don't remember what the podcast was. If I did, I would let you know right now. Um, just look it up. I'm sure Bleeding Cold did uh, an article about it. So this is going to be, you look at the, the image right there. It seems like it's going to be a Marbles-esque type series. And they say it's the most ambitious project they've ever done. And basically in that podcast, Music said he had a project coming up related to Marbles that really encompassed everything in the entire Marvel Universe from the very beginning to what's going on right now, right? He says it was the culmination of everything that he's done at Marvel's from Avengers Forever to Untold Tales of Spider-Man, his Avengers and Iron Man run, all that stuff. It's a big culmination of that, right? Um, I am a huge Kurt Busiek fan. Kurt Busiek's one of my favorite writers. When I was reading comics in the late 90s, Kurt Busiek was my G-O-D as far as comic book writers go. I absolutely thought he was amazing. Astro City, um, and like seriously, Thunderbolts, Avengers. Avengers Forever, to me, is still one of the best Avengers stories ever. And maybe I should bring back the Robbie's Top 5 and do a Top 5 Avengers stories. Anyway, very excited for this one. You're going to have Ross and Busiek working together as they did Marvels. And uh, you get an artist coming in, and it seems like this is going to be kind of like all-encompassing. Marvel's going full in on Marvels right now. And I think that's a fantastic idea. I'm very excited for this. We'll talk more about this next week when we get the official announcement. Generation Zero is going to be DC's free comic book day issue. And so they kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit early. I have read an advanced copy of the final issue of Flash Forward. And at the end of that Flash Forward, when I got to it, I was like, whoa, this is a big deal. Now, we already knew that Flash Forward was building up to something right? So the new crisis is coming, generation, you know, 5G's coming or whatever. This is Generation Zero. You look at Wally West, there's the Flash. He's got a blue costume. He's got a very familiar symbol on his forehead. That all kind of happens at the end of Flash Forward, which hasn't come out yet. So they kind of spoiled a little bit there. Wally West is doing something crazy. He's got Dr. Manhattan powers. How does he get those? Well, if you look back at Jeff Johns' Justice League number 50 from the very end of the new 52 run, um, you find out, you're, if you remember, Dr. Manhattan shows up and kills Owlman and um, um, Metron, right? Supposedly, allegedly. Um, and the Morbius chair is there and it's kind of splattered with blood. Maybe it's infused with this energy. That's somehow Wally West gets contact with the Morbius chair at the end of Flash Forward, blah, 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 blah. This has been billed as kind of like an epilogue for Flash Forward, and it once again lets us know the importance of Flash Forward as far as the upcoming DC Crisis and the upcoming 5G relaunch. So, like I said before, don't sleep on it. Now, I stopped reading it because I just wasn't liking it that much, but I did read that final issue, and y'all need to check this out. If you are interested in what's coming up in DC, you definitely need to be checking that. This Free comic book day issue is going to be like an epilogue for that. So it's going to be Scott Lobdell. It's going to be Brett Booth. So I don't think it's going to be that great, but it's going to have lots of cool content. 
leading into what's coming up, which is obviously going to be based in death metal, um, which we think is what it's called, but the sequel to metal that, that the Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder are doing. Speaking of Scott Snyder, this book will also reprint the Wonder Woman story from Wonder Woman 750 that Scott Snyder did with Brian Hitch, which is the official first book set in the 5G DC universe. Like I mentioned that when we were talking about Wonder Woman 750, so if you missed out on that, if you're interested in what's coming up in DC, check out that Wonder Woman 750, check out Flash Forward, it'll lead you right into this. So that's super, super cool. Donny Cates is teasing his new creator-owned book for Image Comics, supposedly, allegedly, according to the rumors, releasing this summer at Image. Image has been really wanting a big hit. They haven't really had a huge success since, like, Saga and East of West and all that kind of stuff, right? And Walking Dead's over now. They're looking for something big. Maybe they are banking all of their hopes on this. There's no title. It's a ways off, Donny Kate said, but you just got this image. Um, it's, a, it's allegedly an independent event comic book. That's what Donny Cates is, is billing it as. Jeff Shaw is the artist. Um, we'll talk more about that as more information gets revealed. Um, the long-awaited as Bleeding Cool stated, My Little Pony Transformers crossover is coming in May. It's going to be a weekly series in May. Um, and it's tra- as Transformers meeting the My Little Pony universe, right? Maybe they should have done this a few years ago. My Little Pony was kind of like at the height of its popularity. However, it's coming. And uh, so if you've been waiting on this, <laughs> there you go. Um, let's talk about some movies real quick. Sam Raimi directing Doctor Strange 2. That's really cool. So Doctor Strange's director left due to creative differences from Doctor Strange and the the, the Multiverse of Madness. They're, they're saying it's going to be a horror film. They need a new director, and uh, someone to continue this vision. And they're talking to Sam Raimi. They couldn't be talking to anybody better, in my opinion. I love Sam Raimi. He's already proven to us that he can do a classic Marvel um, movie. He did Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. And regardless of what you think of 3, most of us remember 1 and 2 being... Really, really good. And I do think that Spider-Man 3 is half of a great movie. Um, you can check out our movie reviews. You just type in Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, um, Pop Culture Philosophers, or Rock and Robbie. And you'll see our, our when we revisited it just like a couple years ago. Um, but the Sam Raimi did a great job with those movies. I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. Um, I'm a huge fan of Sam Raimi. I love Sam Raimi. So, yeah, I, I'm pumped. Yeah, bring Sam Raimi in to do Doctor Strange, please. That would be amazing to me. That would be super cool. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. As with anything else we're talking about. So let's talk about some trailers. The Spiral trailer came out from the Book of Saw. So it's produced by Chris Rock. It stars Chris Rock. And it stars Samuel L. Jackson. And it's directed by Darren Lynn Bozeman. Now, this is a a Saw movie. It's a Saw reboot. It's a Saw reinvigoration. Um... I love the Saw movies, I'll be honest with you. So I really like what Darren Lynn Bowsman did with some of the Saw movies. I think he directed the best Saw movie to me outside of one, which was three. I love Saw 3. He did two, three, four, and five, didn't he? He also directed Repo, the genetic opera, which I'm a big musical guy. Um, And Repo, it's Repo, man. It's so great. I love it. I love it so much. Anyway, I'm actually very excited for this. The trailer looked really cool. And it looked like a really good turn... For Chris Rock as an actor and a filmmaker. So I think it's a really cool thing. It's a cool idea. I got the idea that it was like a, a copycat Saw Killer. Which is that's something that's already been kind of explored in that series. But you got Darren Lynn Bowsman. And you got Samuel Jackson. You got Chris Rock. I mean I'm telling you what. This is the trailer looked really cool to me. So there you go. In the Heights is a trailer that I saw when I watched Birds of Prey. By the way I loved Birds of Prey. And if you want my full thoughts. Check out a Birds of Prey movie review. It's live on the channel right now. Me, Jelani, and Brooks talked about it. Um, In the Heights is a movie that's based on a Broadway stage musical um, created by the cat that did Hamilton. Now, I've heard nothing but great things about Hamilton. Me, personally, I'm a huge musical guy. Now, I know a lot of people aren't, and that's fine. If you're not, I wouldn't recommend this. If you like musicals, check out this trailer. This trailer looks amazing to me. It looks like the kind of musical that I always wanted to make. Because I started writing a musical several years ago. And I even wrote a couple songs. It was called Hunt's Vegas. Um, and still like a passion project. I would love to I would love to write a musical. <laughs> um, but this looked really cool. It looked really awesome. Now, I've never seen Hamilton. I always have. I've heard nothing but great stuff. Um, and this one just looked amazing. Now, they also have re- uh, recently... 
um, announced that they're going to be doing a live stage production of Hamilton, and they're going to like like air it on, in in theaters or something like that. So I'm I'm very excited to check it out. Um, the final trailer I want to talk about: The Way Back. The Way Back is a cliche sports movie starring Ben Affleck as a as a man who's trying to redeem himself, trying to get his life back together, and he becomes like a basketball coach of a high school team or a college team or something. It's very Hoosiers. It's very cliche sports movies. But I want to tell you this. I love a great cliche sports inspirational movie. And then you add in Ben Affleck. Totally sold on this movie. Totally sold on this movie. It's not going to break new ground or nothing like that. But if you like that that typical um, inspirational sports movie type vibe, I think you're going to like this film. I think you should check out the trailer. It's from the director of Miracle, which is one of those really awesome inspirational sports films. In fact, your sports movies podcast is debuting on YouTube this week. So be on the lookout for that. However, if you can't wait, it's already come out. It came out last year. They're always later on YouTube, by the way. So you can check out popcultureflossers.com and, and listen to the Sports Movies Podcast right now. But I'm really excited about this trailer. I thought it was really cool. And Lethal Weapon 5. So they're finally doing Lethal Weapon 5. At least that's what a producer said. So they're bringing back Richard Donner. They're bringing back the original cast. So I'm assuming that means Joe Pesci and Renee Russo, as well as, of course, um, Mel Gibson and, and, and Danny Glover. Um, I'm down for this. I'm a huge fan of Lethal Weapon. Drew's always trying to, like, on me about Mission Impossible, and I'm like, nah, Lethal Weapon. Everybody's on me at Die Hard. No, Lethal Weapon. Rambo? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Rambo for real. But Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon's one of my absolute favorite an uh, action franchises, period. And I am always down for a revisit. I love every single Lethal Weapon film. One, two, three, and four. I love all four of them. I don't care. Some are better than others. I'll be honest with you. The best one is one. Two's pretty good. They get worse as they go. I was, well, I think four is better than three. I'll be honest. You know, Chris Rock's in that. Maybe Chris Rock's coming back. That'd be really cool. That'd be really cool. Lots of Chris Rock news this week. Anyway, I love Lethal Weapon. And if they bring back Lethal Weapon and they do a, 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 an episode five, if they do a movie five and they bring back the original cast and they have Richard Donner direct it, I am... 100% down with that, and I think it's going to be nifty. So that's what we got for you this week. What do we got coming up for you here at PCP? Um, lots of excitement. I already mentioned a lot of it. We got some stuff on the channel right now, our Birds of Prey movie review, um, the weekly comic book review from last week, top 10 comics from last week, um, and all that's coming back this week. Um, lots of fun stuff, so be on the lookout for that. Um, I got some advanced reviews coming this week. We got lots of excitement. Um, and also, tonight, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, Rockin' Robbie live, and for everybody in the know, tonight is going to be a very special night. Teen Dog Shades Night here on Rockin' Robbie Live. That means we're getting a little wild, so make sure you're joining us tonight, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. And as you notice from this video's release, Weekly Comic Book, or the Weekly Pop Culture Wrap-Up is back to Sunday mornings. So... Pleased to be here every Sunday morning and chat with you about the week's pop culture news. And also, Sunday night for Rockin' Robbie Live, where we talk about movies, comic books, pop culture, and a whole lot more. Tonight, we'll be talking about Birds of Prey. We'll be talking about this upcoming week's new comic books. And we'll be talking about um, some conspiracy theory type stuff, because it's a Teen Dog Shades night. And I'm very excited, very excited when it's a Teen Dog Shades night on Rockin' Robbie Live. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this video. Let me know anything you want to say about this week's news or anything else in the comments down below. Let's keep that conversation going. Build this positive community revolving around comic books, movies, pop culture, television, and a whole lot more. We really do appreciate everything. Please do like, share, and subscribe. And join us at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts and a whole lot more. In fact, we got a new podcast that we're filming this upcoming week or that we're recording this upcoming week. And if you want to get your opinions and thoughts put on that show, join us tonight for the question of the week on the Rock and Robbie Live, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Anyway, we really do appreciate it. I'm Rock and Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on reading.